Hello and welcome to another episode of Good Looking Kickstarters. I'm one of your hosts, Becca Scott. And I'm your other host, Ruel Gaviola. And goodness me, Ruel, I haven't seen you in weeks except for eating Korean barbecue. Oh my gosh, best Korean barbecue ever, and with the bonus of pinball machines. And you know, few games are better than pinball, except for the ones that we found on Kickstarter this week. Good looking Kickstarters, take one. Okay, I gotta start with... (laughs) A game about my favorite lady, one of the best fictional characters of all time, full of passion and aesthetic demands. Uh, Plus, she's a queen. This is Paint the Roses from North Star Games. It's a game by Ben Goldman. Oh my goodness, Ben Goldman! He worked on Oceans along with other designers, and this is his game. It is being touted as potentially one of the best games of all time time that is a co-op game that's about the Queen of Roses from Alice in Wonderland, specifically. Of all time, that is some high praise indeed. (laughs) Um, You know, yeah, uh, if you give anything enough qualifications, then it can be the best of all time in that category. Anyway, this one I think is very, very good in that category. You play as one of the royal gardeners in this co-op game. It's for two to five players. It can be played in 60 minutes. You better be, or else off with their heads. (laughs) And it's for players aged 11 and up. Okay, so you can get help with characters that we know and love. You got the Cheshire Cat, the Mad Hatter, etc. as you decorate this garden to the queen's wishes. And something really cool is that there's a speed up mechanic. The queen's movement gets more powerful as the game goes on. It's lovely. It's beautiful. She's got some sassy expectations for this garden. And I just want to fulfill them, you know? Like a good sassy queen should. Um, It is absolutely just, the art is just beautiful. I, I, I love the look of this game. And the whole like uh, hidden deduction uh, style game, it, it's this looks really good. And I can see sort of like a Hanabi style, like we're trying to deduce where things are and you're helping each other out uh, because it's a co-op game. Very cool. I saw Hanabi was referenced when people were talking about this game, although it's more expansive because Hanabi fits in a tiny box, but that one you're working in a fireworks factory trying to make the fireworks and not explode the factory before the big show. But I love that you want to share information with people, but you're just not allowed to, so you got to do the best you can with the information you've got. It's such a cool mechanism in a game, right? Off with your head! <gasps> Oh, I'm sorry, Ruel. I didn't know I had this power. Oh, uh, uh, well, hopefully editing will get me back together in one piece. It seems it did. Thank goodness for good editors. <laughs> what kind of games did you see on Kickstarter? I found this really cool game called Bird Watcher. Now, this, uh, you know, I gotta be honest. The first time I saw this, it looked immediately, I just thought immediately of um, Wingspan, which has been a huge hit the last few years. This one is... Quite a bit different, actually. You still check out these beautiful birds, but instead of engine building, you are um, pressing your luck and trying to capture photos of these birds. Ooh, a press your luck theme that's set with very peaceful bird watching. I love it. In Bird Watcher, you are rival wildlife photographers on the hunt for photos of these elusive birds of paradise. Uh, Designer Zakir Jaffrey and artist uh, Lauren Helton have put together a really cool quick and fast playing card game. You take three actions per turn. You're gonna either call birds to your tree, snap those photos, or run into the jungle and try to flush those birds out in the clearing so you can take other photos. Now, what I like about this, Becca, is that um, you're um, taking your photos and publications and assembling them in your player's uh, photo journal, and that's how you're gonna score points at the end of the game. You're gonna collect sets of uh, different birds and push your luck trying to get those elusive birds, uh, take those photos of those elusive birds. So it's about a 25 minute to 60 minute game. So it plays much faster than Wingspan. And fun fact, I will be live streaming this this Friday uh, over on my Tabletop Tonight Twitch channel. So y'all can watch me and Michelle uh, take photos of birds and see who is the best photographer of them all. One fun fact about this game, if you back it on Kickstarter, the uh, 
the Kickstarter edition will include wooden insect tokens. So instead of the regular cardboard punchy punchy things, you're gonna get actual wooden tokens if you back it here on Kickstarter. And that's Birdwatcher. This is super cute. Ani Press does great stuff. This game looks charming and adorable, and I like an under an hour playthrough, not gonna lie. Yeah, and this will be one of those games that it's really easy to get to the table, and with a cutesy theme like this, it appeals to a wide audience, and for me, that's a big win because um, it'll get to the table more often, and that's what we want to do. We want to play more games. Heck yeah. But you know what? Before you can get out to the wilderness and catch some birds and photograph them in action, well, first you need to travel to get there on a train. Choo-choo. But what's even better than riding on a train? Why, building tracks and buying and selling stocks. That's right, I'm talking about Union Station. This game is designed by Travis D. Hill of New Mill Industries, which is an indie two-person publisher. This is a cube rail game. Uh, it's all about railroad stock. It's set in Chicago's Union Station at the turn of the century. You're not playing as a railroad company. You're playing as a stockholder in potentially all of the railroad companies. So the game starts with each person maybe getting one stock or getting the chance to bid on one stock. And from there, setting the values of these railroad stocks and buying and selling them to, I don't know, become ultimately powerful? What were they trying to do? Make that money. I think this is a totally unique and complex take on the cube rail style of game. It's simple, it's not too big of a table footprint, and it looks like it's one of those that's really gonna have you thinking way too hard about every turn, which is, Something I love. Yes, I'm really excited about this one. I'm a big Travis D. Hill fan, uh, not because of his um, Cube Rail games, but because of his solo RPG games. I've backed a few of them here on Kickstarter. Uh, he does these little solo adventures um, that you do by yourself, and they're RPGs. Uh, they're quick to play, and it just it really it was really cool during this whole like lockdown thing to be doing these adventures by myself. Um, so I backed a few of those, and now he's getting into the Cube Rails thing and I'm really excited. I'll tell you one more unique thing about Union Station is that they are doing an extremely limited run of this game. They started with only 500 games, they've upped it to a second wave of 1,000 actual games, um, but only 1,000 copies gonna be printed ever. And at the time of our taping here, about 600 of them have already been claimed, so if you're interested, Better check it out. Better back it now, that's right. And in keeping alive with Travis's other games, yes, they tend to sell out quickly. So folks, jump on it if you still can. This recommendation's pulling out of the station. All aboard. <laughs> Cube rail time. Never ready for the hat. <laughs> Well, what else you got for me? Becca, I've got this game that I think is something that strikes near and dear to all of our hearts here. It is Roll Camera, the reprint and expansion. Uh, Roll Camera is a game where we play as fledgling movie producers at a film company, and we need to save the company and by making a successful movie. And how are we gonna do that? Glad you asked, Well, You're gonna roll dice so that represents your crew, and these dice represent the actors, cameras, light, sound, set design, visual effects. And on your board, you're going to arrange these in certain ways to match the shot you're trying to come up with. And this is a cooperative worker placement game, so it's actually dice placement. So as you roll the dice, you're gonna place these on the board and hopefully cooperate to make the best film possible in order to, you know, make the money and, you know, save your company. Now what the expansion does is actually add genres to the mix. So you're gonna have different genre requirements. You're gonna have new equipment cards to deal with. So are you gonna be making The Room? Or are you gonna be making maybe The Princess Bride? Or Star Wars? Or let me see if I can quote a movie that's been made in the last five years. I don't think it's possible. No, those are all the movies anybody needs to know about. That was it. You got the whole list. Folks, roll camera. What an awesome box. Okay, hold on. You gotta show us more stuff because you got a box right there. Here's the box for the base game. It seriously does this, folks. And you take out the film canister. There's your insert. Oh my goodness. It's like a film canister. And you open this up um, and there's cards and instructions and so forth in it. Look at this, folks. And this is just the base game. We're talking about you can get the back the expansion now on Kickstarter. All right, that's it for our official recommendations, but there's one more thing I want to shout out today, and that is the Vandermist Dossier. 
Ruel, what do you think about these, uh, these puzzle adventures, these escape room in a boxes, these murder mysteries? I love them. By the way, I love the way you say dossier as well. That was very fancy. This one is by Diorama. It's set in 1979 Netherlands. That's right. This game was originally written in Dutch and now it's being translated to English. So depending on how well they do, we may get other installments as they become translated. But this one has stellar reviews. Obviously, there's not too much you can give away, except that 19-year-old Abigail Vandermist is an amateur detective herself who goes missing and maybe leaves a trail of clues. I think she gone girled herself. That's, that's my guess. I have not seen that movie. But I have seen Star Wars and The Princess Bride. You're too pure to see it. <laughs> and it's in the wrong century. Oh, OK, yeah, yeah, totally wrong century. All right, thanks for taking a ride on the good-looking Kickstarter train. That's what we found in our roundup. Let us know what you've been into in the comments below. And if you like this video, then hit the like button already. It's the thumbs up over there. And um, maybe just subscribe to the channel while you're at it. Anything else, Ruel? All aboard! <laughs>